expecting us. I told him 12.30. You go make sure that he's alone. I phoned from across the street. Everybody else has gone to lunch. He's alone. All right. We go in. Go. Ray. Martin, I'm glad to see you. Colonel Koretsky, this is Raymond. Oh, Colonel, I'm honored. I wanted to meet you. Sit. The man we call Scotty, do you know him? You mean Jim Scott? Yes, Jim Scott. Well, Scotty and I are cousins. I know him very well. The last time you saw him, when? A couple of weeks ago, I guess. He came into town and had dinner at our apartment. Where is he? I guess he's in Philadelphia. That's where he lives. Well, I know where he lives. He's not in Philadelphia, and he's not here. He was supposed to meet us here this morning at 8. He didn't show up. Now, where is he? Well, I'm sorry. I, I really can't imagine. Imagine. You're not being asked to imagine. You're being asked to know. You say you don't know. Well, very well, then you'll find out, eh? Huh? Of course. I'm perfectly willing to do anything I can to help the party. You'll do the rest, comrade. Yes, Colonel. What? What is all this about? Scotty. He's deserted. He has? Koritsky took a big chance coming here. But your finding Scotty is extremely important to us, Ray. To all of us. You know the pattern. Today a deserter, tomorrow an informer. And you want me to... Look, it's, it's not just that we're cousins. I mean, Scotty, well, he came to live with my parents when he was, he was six years old. I was four. We grew up together. I haven't forgotten. Somebody should have told him. Kuritsky knows. Look, Martin, the party uses my money, my uh, home. You use my business here as a cover-up for the apparatus, and that's fine. I want to help in any way that I can, but Scotty... Well, you're, you're asking too much. Too much? There isn't any such thing. It's yay or nay. You're involved or you're not involved. You share the vision or you don't. Of course I share the vision. That's why I joined the party in the first place. I wanted to change the world, make it a place of uh, justice and dignity. I, that's the one goal that keeps me going. Well, you know what Koretsky says. Where there's fire, there's flame. Where there's belief, there's action. But you're asking me to hunt down my oldest friend. If the party didn't need you, we wouldn't be asking. It's like a brother to me. No. Not now, Ray. Not anymore. Now, Goritsky, you and me, we're the real brothers. What do I have to do? Insight. An exploration in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? My name is Father Kaiser. The incident you have just seen is virtually a transcription of an actual event which took place in New York City in 1938. During the early 1930s, many Americans joined the Communist Party for idealistic reasons. They had rejected as illusionary the Christian notion of God's fatherhood, but they had not rejected the Christian notion of man's brotherhood. They believed in it passionately. They dreamed of building a society of peace and justice where each man would be a brother to every other man. Because the Communist Party promised to construct such a society, these men joined. Their motivation was basically unselfish. They worked and suffered and sacrificed for the party because it seemed to them the best and only way of realizing their ideal of brotherhood. Yet by 1938, the party began to make demands on them. Demands they found hard to reconcile with their commitment to human brotherhood. This is the dilemma in which Ray Lewis, the hero of today's drama, finds himself. You had no choice, dear. Koritsky says you have to go to Philadelphia. You have to go to Philadelphia. That's all there is to it. The word no is still in the dictionary. You and I are still in this world. We want to keep it that way. Well, Scotty wants to stay alive, too. And so does Jane and little Janie and Scotty Jr. Well, Scotty should have thought about them before. Well, maybe he did. Maybe that's why he defected. 
I've never seen you waver before. Well, I've never had to get my hands dirty before. Well, faith is tested only under fire. You know, you're starting to sound just like Tritsky. I admire him. He knows where he stands. Oh, good for him. He, he didn't grow up with Scotty. Well, neither did I. Glenna, hey, what, what, what's happened to you? Hey, what happened to the soft girl that I married? You used to love Scotty. What, what is it? I'm frightened. I love you, Ray. I love Scotty, but I love you so much more. It's all right. Don't worry. What are you going to do? I'll go to Philadelphia, and I'll look. And supposing... I don't know. I just don't know. They was paid up, that's all I care about. Well. You won't find nothing there, nothing but trash. Well, I'd like to look anyway. Don't matter to me. Don't forget to pull the door to when you go. Thank you. Ray? Scotty. Scotty, you, you shouldn't be here. Yeah, I know that, but I pay rent on it. Oh, it's not funny. What? They're looking for you. Well, you didn't come all the way to Philadelphia just to tell me that. How's Glenna? Well, she's fine. She's just fine. Say, hold that over here for me a minute, will you? Now, I know it's not in that box, but it might have gotten in here. What are you looking for? Bigelow. What? Bigelow, the bulldog, little Janie's favorite toy. You mean you came back here for that? You put your life on the line for a toy? Listen, if I don't find Bigelow, Jeannie won't get to sleep. She cuddles him every night. Scotty, you're a madman. Yeah, well, you want me to change after all these years? Looks like maybe you have. Ray, I'd like to tell you about that change. Tell well, you the why of it. Now? It, you know, you, you really are. You've got... No, no, just the opposite. It makes a lot of sense. Especially in here. Well, you save it, because I'm, I'm not interested. Look, Ray, I found what I've been looking for. All the things I had and lost. Scotty. Yeah, well, I guess I found everything but Bigelow. And you. <coughs> Listen to me. I'm here, here in Philadelphia. This isn't a social call. You're not here by choice. Well, I've got a choice now. Yeah, yeah, you could tell Koritsky that you saw me. He'd know I didn't get very far. That would make it easy for him. Or I could say I didn't see him. All right, which is it going to be? We're too old for cat and mouse. Oh, well, I did it. Bigelow. In the flesh. See, uh, he reminds you of anything? Yeah. Our, uh, boxing team, the uh, Bulldog. Yeah, it's 15 years ago. Seems kind of hard to believe. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of things are hard to believe. Not if you listen to your own heart. Ray, the heart's like a shortwave radio. It picks up messages, cries from broken souls uh, Scotty, far I away. Told you I wasn't interested. Now, I've heard enough. I, I'm, I'm going now. You and I don't cut it off like that. <laughs> Well, someday you're going to get an SOS. 
the same way I did. We'll talk about it one of these days. I'll give you a few months. Stay away from me, Scotty. I mean... Well, Bigelow, at least I found you. Tonight, I guess that's all I really expected to find. I couldn't find any trace of him. There's nothing. You looked where? How? I talked to the uh, landlady, and they didn't leave any forwarding address. Checked with the gas company, the water and power company. Checked with the post office. There's nothing. The movers? Well, he moved himself. In fact, uh, left a big sofa behind. You will keep right on looking. He'll come out of his hole. They always do. I gave you a few months. I'm sorry. It's not easy to be a fugitive. I'm tired, Ray, and I'm lonely. The kids miss you. How are they? Well, oh, they're like wild wheat, bigger and more beautiful every day. How much time have we got? Well, I'm not expecting Karitsky, if that's what you mean. It's my good friend. Remember him? Sobokov? Sure. Five years ago, he was Russia's leading poet. Don't hear too much about him these days, do you? But we know why, don't we? Because Sobokov is dead, murdered by the communists. They made up a fairy tale, and they charged him with treason. I, I get it. You want to talk about the purge, is that it? Well, the more accurate word is massacre, but yeah, I want to talk about that. And about the deliberate starvation of millions of peasants in the Ukraine and about Rice and Juliet Points and Rykoff and all the others, they're all dead. Shot, tortured, or left to rot, but dead. And they were the men who were the party. They were the revolution, and they're dead. The recital doesn't impress me, Scotty, because you're forgetting one thing. Terror is an instrument of policy. If the vision is right, then even the human horror is right. Well, I said the same thing until I heard about Sobakov. My friend, Sobakov. Well, the fact that he was your friend doesn't change anything. It changed everything for me. Don't you remember what we talked about the last time? I told you the heart was like a shortwave radio. It picked up signals, cries from broken souls far away. And what about it? Well, I heard Sobakov's cry of agony. You heard? What do you mean you heard? It went beyond my mind. It went to my heart. Only my heart could hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about something deeper than reason, something greater than the logic of the human mind. Well, that, there's nothing greater than the logic of the human mind. See, it started with Sobakov, but it didn't stop there. At first, I didn't know what to make of it. I only knew that something was terribly wrong. No, wait, wait a minute. You still haven't told me. What is it that is greater than the logic of the human mind? All right, just listen to me. I'm trying to tell you. See, Sobakov was like a brother to me, yet in the name of some abstract ideal of future brotherhood, I was asked to sacrifice him. I couldn't do that. I still can't. There has to be something wrong with an ideology that asks that. You see, man is more than just a piece of protoplasm caught in the wash of history. I know that now. We have a dignity and a grandeur that can be understood only if we look beyond ourselves. I, I, I recognize the phrasing. Now, why don't you just... Hang a label on it. All right. All right. I ran from communism smack into the fact of God, because that's what's been missing all these years. Without God, all the rest is just talk. Without God, there is no human dignity. Without God, the vision of brotherhood and peace and justice is just a pipe dream. It has no substance, no base. I, you said you were lonely, so I said, come in, we'll talk. But you weren't lonely. You came in here to spout this pap about God. Well, for years we talked about communism, our experience of it. Tonight we're going to talk about God. Well, not on my time. We're yes, talking. on your time and for you. Because as long as I draw breath, I'm going to care about you. 
And as far as I'm concerned, I'm still six and you're still four, so you sit down and hear me out. On one condition. Let's have it. This is the last time you ever try to see me. That's no deal. Well, then I can't promise I won't uh, turn you into Koritsky. That's fair enough. Now sit down. Then, then he went on and on about God and the soul and this long, slow thing that happened to him. Oh, he must have talked for hours. Well, what thing that happened to him? Well, uh, the whole process, he kept calling it a, a spiritual experience. Oh, a spiritual experience. I've never had one. Well, neither have I. Maybe you have to belong to a club or something. I know about childhood experience and practical experience and cultural and biological and sexual experience, but spiritual. Maybe he means being afraid in the dark. He's had a lot of that lately. Darling, get in your pajamas. It's 5 o'clock uh, in the morning. You must be exhausted. You know, Glenna, it's no joke to be barricaded in one room with a wife and two little kids afraid of every noise that you hear. Let's not make fun of him. Well, nobody pushed him. He locked himself. Well, still, let, let's not make fun of him. Dear, you're cranky. Come on, get in bed. I was only making fun of the spiritual experience, Holcomb. Well, it's not Holcomb, it's Scotty. Well, don't snap at me. I wasn't there. I didn't hear what he said. Well, tell me about it. I'd like to learn. I'd like to know how you know you're having one of these special things, these spiritual experiences. Oh, sure, just like that. I'll explain it to you. Dear, if you're disturbed, I'm sorry. I'm not disturbed. I... Well, then tell me something he said. Well... He started talking about little Janie. He talked about her hand. Her hand? Yes. She fell asleep in his arms one night. And he, he started looking at her hand. Looked at it for a long time. And he began to notice the perfect little fingers, the tiny nails. And? And he realized that that hand wasn't just an accident of chance. Was that all? Well, that's all. Uh, well, no, not really. The, the thought kept after him. He couldn't get rid of it. And then suddenly he realizes little Janie's hand is created by God. I mean, that, that's what he said. Well, that's a mighty big leap from little Janie's hand to God, don't you think? Well, I, I, I don't know what to think. Do you know that it was Sobokov's death that convinced him to leave the party? And after that, he didn't know where to go or what to do. He came pretty close to suicide. And that's when he said that it happened. What happened? Well, I, I don't know exactly. It's something to do with being frightened and desolate and alone, and then suddenly realizing you're, you're not alone, that somebody cares. Somebody will get you through. Well, how did he reason that one out? What do you... Didn't he? He just knew. And that's a spiritual experience. Oh, come on, darling. You can still get a couple hours sleep. Oh, oh it's too light. Ray, honey. Ray, you had better tell Scotty to stay away from you. Honey. Oh, please, come to bed. I'm, I'm hungry. I... I'm going to get something to eat. Jim Scott joined the Communist Party because he believed in human brotherhood. He left the Communist Party because he could no longer reconcile this ideal with the philosophy and tactics of communism. In pain and anguish, he discovered the awful truth. The appeal of communism is humanistic. The reality of communism is anything but humanistic. Yet the tactics of terror and deceit used by the communists are completely consistent with their materialistic, atheistic view of man and his destiny. If man is only an animal, they reason, he can be treated like any other animal. He has no rights, 
His dignity can be violated at will. Scotty began by rejecting communist tactics. In the end, he was forced to reject the inhuman philosophy on which these tactics are based. As a communist, he had viewed man from below. Now he began to look at him from above. He began to speculate about the spiritual side of his own nature. And he began to ask questions. Where did I come from? Where am I going? What is this bond I feel with all other men? These are theological questions, and they require a theological answer. As time passed, Scotty became more and more certain of God's existence. He found God could be known by reason and experienced by love. He is as real as the bread you eat, the air you breathe, the ground you walk on. This discovery changed Scotty's life. It made him an implacable enemy of the Communist Party. This is why Koritsky was so determined to get rid of him. How long has it been now since you've seen him? Oh, about uh, two weeks before he uh, deserted. He deserted five months ago today. That is a long time to stay in hiding. I guess that he will contact you first. I said, I guess that yeah, he Yeah, I, uh, I heard what you said. But when he does, you must handle the situation very carefully. You must bring him to us, but he must not suspect. The party has an account to settle with him, you understand? I understand. Yeah, but there is something else you should understand, too. The party is aware of your former close association with Scotty. The party is aware that... Uh, your leading him to us is a hard matter for you. Yes, well, the party and the colonel show great wisdom. The party knows two things about its own that the outside world does not know. It knows that each comrade is still moved by natural feelings. But it knows also that where there is danger to the party, the comrade will always follow instructions. He will follow them even against the strongest natural feelings. Yes? Yes. Scotty can do great damage to the party. He is very dangerous. The account must be settled, you understand? I understand. Hey! Over here, honey. What else did you buy? This, it was on the seat of the car. What is it? Oh. Did you read this? No, I was afraid to. I thought it was a threat thing from a strangler to his intended victim. It was so strange. I didn't know it was from no. Scotty. Well, listen to this. Dear Ray, uh, little Janie wanted you to have this. She's been asking for you and Glenna. And I told her that you were on a long journey. This is her way of trying to lure you back. I, I know that it took real love on her part to send this to you. Bigelow the Bulldog, it's the most prized possession. Uh, as you know, Ray, I have something to give you, too. My most prized possession, my awareness of God, my faith. You know me, I won't give up. I'm not an old cousin. There's too much good in you. So, come on, give me another crack. I'll meet you tomorrow night in the old church on 3rd Street. That should be appropriate. See you in the vestibule at 9 o'clock. Well, he doesn't make it easy, does he? Ray, he's never going to leave you alone. He never will. You remember what Koritsky said last week? Yes, I know. I'll fix our dinner. We won't decide now. Thanks for coming. Where do you want to talk? I don't want to talk. I just want you to walk inside with me. 
Come on, just sit there, that's all. Smell the air, get the feel of it. Let it surround you. God comes in through the pores. Well, wait a minute, let, let me put this out first. You and I will walk together, like friends. Say, Ray, uh, since I went into hiding, you and I haven't had a chance to have a talk. But all these months, I wanted to tell you about an SOS I got from my friend Sobakov. I heard it in my heart. Well, one of these days, you're going to get the same kind of message. Because it's tonight, I'm sure of it. And I'm glad for you. All you have to do is just listen. Move. In the late fall of 1938, Jim Scott was murdered by the Soviet secret police. He willingly laid down his life that Ray might discover the truth. How explain such unselfish devotion? I think there's only one explanation. Scotty's deep and heroic faith in God. Caught up in one of the great spiritual conflicts of the 20th century, Scotty realized the brotherhood of man can only be rooted in the fatherhood of God. All men are brothers because they have the same father. Each member of the human family is possessed of infinite dignity because all men are made in that father's image and likeness. Faith in man requires faith in God. Love of God demands love of man. If you really love man, you implicitly love God. And if you really love God, you must of necessity love man. The brotherhood of man, the fatherhood of God. These are complementary realities. Each necessitates the other. You may have wondered what happened to Ray Lewis, the man who betrayed Scotty. Nine months after Scotty was shot, Ray Lewis broke with the Communist Party. Scotty's SOS had gotten through. Ray Lewis lived to tell me his story. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.